Tisibius' Water Pump Tisibius was a man from Alexandria in the 3rd century BCE. He was fascinated by the study of pneumatics and hydraulics, and in his tenure as the head of Alexandria's great library, he came up with devices used to raise water to heights, a pump. This device was described in text 200 years later by Vitruvius in his handbook on architecture and classical machinations. Since I'm not fluent in classical languages, I relied on a translation of the original text to English done by Morgan in 1914. In this text, function, materials, key components are all described in enough detail for reconstruction. To recreate this water pump, I decided to use 3D printing because I didn't have much experience with it and I would like to learn more. First, I had to design, and I used Autodesk AutoCAD 2017, a program not necessarily designed for 3D printing, but I already had a little bit of experience using it in the past, and it could function with enough work. The next step was to convert to SDL lithographic, a file type used for the next program called Repetier Host. Repetier Host takes these STL files and converts them into objects that are used by another program called Slicer. And as the name suggests, Slicer takes these objects and slices them into individual layers so that a 3D printer can read them and function properly. The 3D printer used was the Tavo Tarantula 3D printer. It has a 20 by 20 by 20 centimeter print space and uses copper tinted PLA as filament. I use this because it is cheaper, lighter, and more biodegradable than alternatives out there. And I specifically chose the copper or bronze color because in the text, it describes bronze as the material being used for construction. The text by Vitruvius describes eight main components. The first are two buckets, which are used as casings for a piston and to hold water. The second are two pistons themselves, which are used to draw water into the buckets and also push them out of the buckets. The third is a lever, which is used to allow alternating drawing and draining of each bucket using a pivot point. The fourth are two forks, which are used to transport water from each bucket into a central chamber. These are basically pipes. The fifth is the central chamber I mentioned, which is used to hold water from each bucket. And as it fills, it reaches a cowl, which is used to force water from the chamber into a trumpet. This trumpet allows water to be moved to a trough for removal or ejected out at high speeds as a sort of water hose for fires. And the last are valves. So there are four valves in total, and this was not printed on the 3D printer. I created it by layering silicone onto a thin sheet of paper and by gluing one end above a hole. As here we see me embarrassingly testing that functionality of it, I blow air into the chamber and as it escapes, it lifts the flap. When the water stops flowing into the chamber, the valve closes by the force of gravity and the water above it and prevents backflow back into the chamber. Here we're watching a video right now of one of the most preliminary tests we did of the valves themselves. So we see the water being pumped into the main chamber and the valves are functioning perfectly. Some other components that were designed and created but weren't necessarily described in the text were a base for the lever, so it had some support. We also created knuckles for the top of each piston shaft. I'll describe their function later. We created a cap just for aesthetics to cover each of the buckets. Some feet, so that way the buckets and the main chamber were elevated off the ground to allow water flow into the bottom. And lastly, we used small metal pins as rotational points and axles for each of the pistons and the lever. Once printed, we needed to assemble all the parts together, and this was done by using three different types of glues. Super glue for short-term tacking, Gorilla glue for the long-lasting permanent adhesion, and lastly, we used hot glue to attach the machine to the container. Historically, soldering and tacking would be used to attach the pieces together, and we also explicitly read in the text that rivets are being used. In my case, rivets would not be as effective as the plastic PLA I used would break. It would, however, be more effective with bronze and other metals if they would need to be attached to each other. Here we see the machine functioning as intended. As each piston arm is depressed, it forces water into the main chamber, and the valves close behind it, preventing backflow. As one is depressed, we see the other piston raise, and water is drawn into the bucket. We can't see it here, but the main chamber is filling with water, and as it gets full, it ejects water out of the spout on top, or the trumpet, where in different circumstances, water can be continually lifted or ejected at high pressures as a water hose. Many challenges arose over the course of this whole project. The first of them was the design. So AutoCAD is not a user-friendly program, and lots of time was spent trying to learn and create these models in AutoCAD to be used for export. 
The second and by far hardest was the conversion. So AutoCAD could easily export to STL the correct file type, but for some reason it would scale differently and weirdly between the modeling program Repetier I used and AutoCAD. For instance, a 10 inch design in AutoCAD would export to a 2.5 centimeter object. Initially, I overcame this by eyeballing in Repetier roughly the size it should be because the program itself had the ability to scale to specific sizes. But eventually I just learned how to convert directly in AutoCAD to the right scales, which made printing exact parts much easier. In my case, one final challenge did present itself and it had to do with the pistons again. So the top of the piston shaft would break because the material was too thin, and as a result, I had to design a knuckle to fit over the top of the piston shaft that would attach the piston to the lever bar. This piston knuckle was much stronger and structured and it wouldn't break. Overall, I learned much about how to interpret text, learn about water flows, pressures, and hydraulics and pneumatics, learn a little bit about design and annotation of having to use modern technology for classical applications, and there's some math involved, some simple calculations involving length, radius, and some scaling as well. I also learned how difficult large-scale construction of this would have been in classical times. Some of the challenges I faced, they would have faced too, and we both had to overcome them. Overall, I really enjoyed this project, and I'm really glad I learned so much from it.